Hello Victory Stitches, welcome back. Today we're going to look at pattern envelope. We have been looking at how to decode sewing patterns and the like. We're going to concentrate on the envelope today. The front's pretty self-explanatory but I'll have a wee discussion about that but we'll learn the secret code on the back. So let's roll up our sleeves, we can do this. <laughs> start with the front of the pattern envelope. It's got the picture that shows you what garment it is that's actually caught your eye and you decided you want to make it. In this case we've got a Butterick B6385, that's the serial number of the pattern. Now this up here it says Lisette Sew Your Style. That's one of their ranges. So they'll have different ranges for, you know, the Lisette Sew Your Style might have a bunch of other garments available in different patterns. And what we're really concerned with up here is our sizing. Now this is a size range known as E5 which covers sizes 14 right through to 22. The other one you could get and you, if you're in that range be very careful that you don't pick up the A5 envelope which is sizes I think 6 through to 14. I did that once when I wanted to buy a pattern to make my husband a shirt and I bought the smaller size and he's actually a medium to a large so I had to go back and beg them to swap it over for me and they're not always happy to do that because people do go to the shops, get a pattern, take it home, unfold it carefully, trace it, put it back and go back and say oh I don't need this anymore. So just keep that in mind, you've got this case E5, I'm a size 16 so that is the range that I needed. You will note that there are three different illustrations on the envelope. We have got essentially one jacket, it is one main style, but there are variations between the three. View A has a rounded collar, view B has a more sort of angular collar, and view C has a high stick up, sticky up collar that doesn't fold over. And there is a slight variation on the pocket. View C has a kind of a pointy, slightly, almost looks like an envelope top pocket and B and A each have just a rectangular pocket flap. So the main body of the coat is the same in all three cases and these are just variations that you can mix and match to suit what it is you want to make. Okay, now we're going to flip over to the back of the envelope which has got most of the information that we need. At the very very top of the envelope on the flap we've got a bunch of numbers relating to size and measurement. So the three main measurements that you are usually concerned with when dressmaking for women is the bust, the waist and the hip. So for a, a guy it would be the chest, the waist and I'm not sure if they have the hip measurement or not for trousers because guys are a diff different sort of shape to women but in this case we're looking at bust, waist and hip and you've got your sizes laid out across the top 6 to 8 to 10 right through to 22 and it tells you uh, in the English part what each approximate measurement should be in inches and in the French it will tell you the same in centimeters so if you're from the US you'll just go straight to the English and the inches and there's no worries I'm from New Zealand and here we work in metrics so I would generally speaking be looking at the centimetres but I'm actually so used to working in inches with a lot of uh, patchworking and a lot of things that have come in from the states that I've kind of become bilingual with my measurements so I can relate to the metrics and the imperial so I've highlighted size 16 because that's my size so I know that it's a bust 38, a waist 30 and a hip 40 now they're not gospel accurate, they're just an approximation and you can with these multi-size patterns mix and match if you've got a particularly large bust and a narrow waist you can adjust your pattern by cutting between the lines you might want to cut it out so a size 16 bust and then as those lines come down to the waist you might want to nip into a size 14 waist and then back out to a 16 and everything else but generally I cut out a 16 I know the butterick patterns really well and the 16 works for me the next thing we can see is we've got a description of the product. It's a Mrs. Coat. So it says it's a fitted coat 
His princess seams a back yoke with a forward shoulder seam. So that means that the shoulder seam does not sit right on top of the shoulder. It sits forward a little bit. And I'll show you that in the illustration below in just a moment. It is, has a two-piece sleeve. So the sleeve has an under sleeve and an over sleeve. That helps with nice fitting around the elbows. It has a collar and pocket variation. So as we discussed on the front, there's different collar options. There's the rounded, the pointed, or the stand-up collar, and the different pocket variations. The plain rectangular or the one with a little point looks a bit like an envelope. So that's a basic description of the product. And view A, it says it has optional top stitching. Views B and C, top stitching. Again, you can quite often decide if you want to make view B, but you want to use view C's pocket flap and you don't want to put top stitching in, you can. Top stitching is just cosmetic anyway. It says note, there are separate pattern pieces included for different cup sizes, A slash B, C or D. Now a cup size is a bit like a cup on a bra. So the A slash B is probably your average cup size where you measure and the instructions are inside. So you measure your full bust and then you measure the high bust and what determines your cup size is the difference between the two. It's not the actual measurements themselves but it's the differential between the high bust and the full bust measurement and descriptions again and instructions are inside the pattern. Now you head off to the shop because you want to buy your fabric. You've decided you like a particular fabric but how much do you buy? Well I've actually highlighted an orange here because I'm I've made I'm in the process actually of making view B. Now your material is going to come in one of two widths on the roll. It's either going to be 45 inches, which corresponds to 115 centimeters, give or take a bit. Sometimes it's 112, sometimes it's up to much as 120. Or if you're lucky, you can get a roll that is 60 inches wide or 150 centimeters, 1.5 meters. Now that is the distance between from selvage to selvage. So if you are looking at a roll of fabric, you would stand it on the ground. How tall is it? That is the width of your fabric. So I'm making view B and I know I'm a size 16. So here's my size 16. So I know that if I'm using 45 inch wide fabric, I need four yards. If I'm using 60 inch fabric, I only need 2 and 7 eighths yards. But I can't go to the shop in New Zealand and ask for yards because they'll just look at me like I'm speaking a foreign language. So I'll toddle across to the French side with a metric side and I've, again I've got my 16, size 16 here. I'll take it down 3.7 meters of the uh, narrower fabric which is your 45 inch or 115 centimeters or only 2.7 of the wider 150 centimeter fabric. These are quite generous. You're going to find you will have some fabric left over. Probably not enough if you make a huge mistake by cutting a long piece out incorrectly. But you, you should be okay with what they say. I tend to buy a little bit more. I might round it up to the nearest meter so I might go and buy three meters just to be on the safe side in case I cut a pocket incorrectly and I've got a little bit left over. But you can, if you're very careful by following the instructions inside, 2.7 meters of the 150 centimeter wide is plenty. It's got plenty of breathing space. Now that takes care of my fabric. I also need to buy fusible interfacing. And notice this fusible interfacing for view A and view C as well because the body of each jacket is the same. It is the same construction with everything. It's only the collar and the pockets that vary. So I need my fusible interfacing. Now that only generally comes in a couple of widths, 46 centimeters or 51 centimeters, which is six, sorry, 18 or 20 inches. It's a lot narrower than the actual fabric. So for a size 16, I need two and a quarter yards or 2.1 meters. I haven't finished shopping yet because if I look down further in this orange line here I need some lining. Now that's that slippery fabric you find on the inside of jackets and coats. It hides all your raw edges, it looks really nice, it feels nice and smooth when you put it on and it just makes the finished product so much nicer. 
Now I need lining whether I'm making A, B or C because remember each jacket or each coat is the same coat with just a few minor cosmetic variances. Now it's only given me one option, 115 centimeters or 45 inches. You may find that you can get lining in the extra wide piece but generally it comes in the 115 centimeter. Now my size 16, take it down, I need two meters of lining. So that covers my material, it covers my interfacing and my lining. The only thing left now to look at the pattern is the notions. Now notions are things like your zips and your snap fasteners and buttons and buckles and all those sorts of hardware that go on a garment. So in this case I need for A, B and C I need a pair of one half inch covered shoulder pads. So they're only a half inch thick, they're not massively huge, I mean it isn't the 1980s anymore so we don't need the humongous shoulder pads but they actually make a really nice difference if you don't put them in the, the jacket doesn't look right. Uh, so we need a one, a one half inch covered shoulder pads and five one inch buttons over in the French side, just you can literally just translate right across the line so you know you're on the same line if you can't understand the French words but it says 1.3 centimeters so you know that the shoulder pad needs to be 1.3 centimeters thick. The buttons, five buttons, 25 mil. That's the diameter of the button. And if you're doing view C you need one snap and that'll be just to snap the top of the the stand-up collar just to keep it closed nice and snug around your neck. And the last bit on the pattern is just a discussion on the finished garment measurement. So when you finish sewing it, what you can expect it to be, width at the lower edge at the hem, its back length from the base of the neck which would be say right here down to the hem. So you know if you're particularly tall you may think that that finished length isn't quite enough so you'll know you'll want to probably extend the garment to make it a bit longer and there are lines on the pattern that tell you where to do that, where to lengthen or shorten. I will put a link to one of my earlier videos that actually shows those lines on a pattern piece for you. And right at the bottom we've got line drawings showing what each garment looks like and you can see that each coat looks more or less the same. We've got a front and a back for view A, front and back for B and the same for C. And the main variance, as you can see, is in the collar. If you can look closely, I'm not sure if it's clear enough on the video, there's a faint dotted line as well as the main line going down this princess seam down here. That is the top stitching and that is an optional thing. And there's a little line here and here on each side of the bust. That is a bust dart to help add to the shaping. And if you look at the sleeve, you can clearly see there's a line separating the sleeve into two pieces, uneven pieces. That's showing the underside of the sleeve, which is one piece, and the over sleeve, which is the other piece. And by having two pieces to your sleeve, you're actually getting a nice bit of shaping going on. And that is pretty much that. That is all the different bits and pieces of a pattern envelope decoded for you. Next week we will look at the layout diagrams and show how we take our fabric and our pattern pieces and how we lay them out according to instructions. Well, I hope that was helpful to you all. It's a little bit tricky sometimes when you look at all those numbers all over the place, but I hope that's cleared up a few things for you. Next week we will look at the layout diagrams that come inside the envelope and start having a, a discussion on how those translate to laying your patterns out. And until then, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next week. See you later.